Welcome to this video tutorial on how to render a realistic stone wall in Vero for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be using this simple scene here where we've got a wall and our kind of tree to cast a shadow on it and currently in the render it's looking something like this where we've set up a simple sunlight on the here to cast a shadow on the surface and we're going to be applying our texture to this red wall here. Now to begin to create this material, I'm first going to open up the V-Ray Asset Editor, either by finding it in the toolbar under this icon, or by going to V-Ray and clicking on Asset Editor here. Under the Asset Editor, I'm going to make a new material by going down to the bottom left in the Material Creation and making a generic material. We're going to call this Rock. Now under this material I'm going to start importing in some textures and maps that are going to give us our kind of rock wall texture. Now to find these textures I'm actually using polyhaven.com which has some free textures you can download, some really nice ones for different types of rock, material surfaces, textures on the ground and landscape. I'm going to be using this particular texture here which you can download and I'll put a link in the description so you can also use the same texture if you're following along. Once you've downloaded that, we're going to begin by putting in the diffuse or the color texture. To do that, we're going to go and open up this diffuse tab. If you can't see these settings, you'll have to open up this little arrow on the right hand side of your menu to open up these texture settings. And you can add a texture map in by clicking on the square checkerboard logo here. I'm going to select the bitmap option and we're going to select the color texture. It has a little diff at the end, meaning it's the diffuse or color texture, which we can put in and hit open there. And there you can see, if we click on the back button, it's now been applied to my material. Now to apply that to my wall, I'm gonna select my object, right click on the material and click apply to selection. If we then reopen up the render buffer here, and we just preview that render, you'll see now that that rock texture has now been applied to the wall. Now what will happen is it's just going to stretch it over the surface of the geometry and depending on how big your geometry is you might find like mine that the texture is quite warped. If you want to properly kind of resize this texture we need to do something called texture mapping. This can be done if we leave that render open here by selecting the object like so, going into the properties menu which is this little rainbow wheel here and then we're going to select the texture mapping option here. Under texture mapping we're going to select the box mapping to apply a box mapping and we're going to draw out a box that's essentially going to represent the size of our texture map that's going to be repeated across the surface. Usually I just do this by eye thinking okay I want the texture to be roughly this size and then we can resize it more accurately once we've done this process. It will give you a little preview once you've set your box and then just hit enter on the keyboard to input that in and if we zoom in you can then see my texture is more accurately kind of mapped across that surface now. Now if you want to sort of fine tune that texture we can always then go to the X, Y and Z size to make it bigger or smaller. Usually these textures from Polyhaven come in as square images so you kind of want to make sure all your numbers are roughly the same otherwise it might look a bit warped and distorted. And I think somewhere around here looks good for my particular wall texture. Now that we've done that I'm now going to start to add in some of the bumpiness to give it that feeling that it's being kind of pushed in and out like it is made of real sort of stone and rock. Now in order to do that we're going to add something called a displacement to this particular model. To add a displacement we're going to open up our V-Ray Asset Editor again. We're going to go back to the Create tab at the bottom left and then go to Geometries and find the Displacement tab. Under this displacement I'm going to make sure my object is selected. I'm going to right click and apply to selection there. So we've applied that displacement parameter onto that wall. You won't see any change just yet, but if we then go under this kind of mode, click on the texture map, go to bitmap, and we're going to load in this texture here, which is essentially a black and white texture pushing in and out that model based upon that color. So wherever it's white, it will pull the model out and wherever it's black, it's going to push it in. And this is going to give the illusion that the rock is actually kind of deforming and looking like a kind of real rock surface. Once they hit open there, we're going to go back and you'll notice that there's a sort of slight update in the render, but there might not be any visible changes just yet. 
Now this is all based upon the amount of our displacement and this is linked to the units you're using. So I'm using millimetres, so at the moment it's displacing it by one millimetre, which is so small we can't really see it. But if I up that to, let's say, 100 millimetres and hit enter, you'll then see that that's really starting to kind of push and pull the surface of the geometry. Now we're getting quite a good kind of bumpiness on the rock if we sort of zoom in there onto that. But you'll notice, I'm just going to move this out so we can slightly see the object behind, that it's doing this thing where it's pulling apart the faces. And that's not very useful. You can see here it looks quite weird. Our object is kind of being stretched apart and it's not really looking like a wall anymore. It's looking like something that's being slightly kind of detached and a weird bit of 3D geometry. Now the reason this is doing this is because it's acting on each of the faces independently, it ends up pulling them apart because we're displacing the geometry to cause this kind of bumpy effect. If you don't want this to happen, there's a little option in V-Ray called Keep Continuity. If we click on that button, you'll see that the geometry glues itself back together and keeps those seams nice and solid, which is what we're looking for when we're creating our wall. So then we get the nice displacement on the surface but we also keep the continuity of the geometry and we're not getting that kind of pulled apart edge. This also means we get a nice kind of wiggly edge on here too um, which will help sell the effect of our kind of model. Now you might find when you keep the continuity you might need to up the amount again just to kind of increase the effect so usually I just play around with that until it's looking kind of roughly as I want it to and you can put it up and down depending on how much you want the geometry to be displaced. We go. As a final tweak to this, I'm going to add a little bit of shininess to this rock. It might be that it's slightly wet or it's just picking up the light in certain ways because it's very matte as a material at the moment. To do that, I'm going to go back to the rock and we're going to go onto the reflection tab. Now, often using these maps, particularly from Polyhaven, they won't use a glossiness but they'll use a roughness texture to determine the shininess of the object. So I'm going to click on this Use Roughness option. And then under the reflection roughness, I'm going to click on the maps, go to bitmap again. We're going to scroll down and find this little one called rough there. The way this works is the lighter the image, the more kind of matte that kind of material will be and the darker, the shinier it will be. Now with that inputted, we also then need to change this reflection color. If we up this, it's going to be picking up more light from the sun. And if we lower this, it's going to be picking up less. And you can kind of see here, that if I up that, it's almost reflecting more light from the sky there. And I think that's probably too much. So I'm going to put it down somewhere around here. And all it's going to do is just start to pick up some of those highlights. Just so we're picking up a little bit of light from the sky as if the rock in some places is a little bit shinier than others. And it's going to give us that added realism. It's just going to make it look slightly more realistic there. And those are essentially the main controls we need to determine and create this rocky wall. If we zoom out, we can then see this in full effect here. And I'm just going to let that sort of load a little bit so we can start to see how the surface of that geometry is looking. These particular display surfaces work really well when you cast shadows on them or when you're moving the light in the scene so you can really pick up all those textures. Also with that keep continuity option, we get this really nice broken edge to our surfaces as well, which can also help sell the realism of our scenes. I hope you found that video tutorial useful on how to create a rocky surface in V-Ray for Rhino. And if you want to watch any other videos on material creation or rendering in the software, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.